I was thinking about Parker Sidner's work and the fact that Parker Sidner created tombstones with inscriptions, people's stories. He, in a sense, gave them immortality that they had never had before. And I think that is his real legacy. Okay, my name is Peter Bergstrom. I'm a member of the Board of Directors of Literacy Interactive, and I'd like to welcome you all to our impromptu rescheduled indoor event this morning. I'd like to take a minute before we start to recognize the members of our program committee, chaired by Ms. Inez Herman Farrar, Doris Hester, Maddie Cohen, and me. So, having said that, introduce myself, welcome to all. I would like to present Mr. Jim Hare from the uh, Virginia Department of Historical Resources, who is primarily responsible for having put the marker up for us. So, if you would like to come up and give us a few remarks. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning everybody here on a rainy day, but a happy day. Um, as I was introduced, I am from the Department of Historic Resources. We maintain, in cooperation with the Department of uh, Transportation of Virginia, the Historical Highway Markers Program of Virginia. And you may not know it, but it's the oldest highway marker program in the country, started in about 1927. So uh, this is probably our 2,534th marker map. Uh, that we're here to inaugurate today. We've got quite an inventory of markers, and um, as you know, they're all over the state. And people, you know, when they first got to uh, see them, were driving Model A's and cars such as that. And <laughs> they could slow down easier, perhaps, and, or certainly just drive along and read the signs much more easily. We still try to keep the text to uh, a, a limit of 150 words, which can be quite a challenge. Um, we have a PhD historian on our staff. I can't take credit for the research behind this, but she works very closely with Angelita. And uh, I think it's an honor that we've got another historian from uh, Arizona State University working with us on this occasion. Um, and it made it quite a pleasure to you know, Very few people have the time to pull over and uh, stop and read them. In order to rectify that, we are in the process of creating a mobile app for your cell phone, which we hope will allow you to just turn it on like a little radio station as you drive around. And GPS signals will cue the text to be read to you so that um, you can continue to partake in the history of the Commonwealth. And I don't want to go on too much longer because I know there are a lot of important people here who have plenty to say, but I do want to say that. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we, we hope to be able to accomplish in the next couple of years, based on an initiative that is being spearheaded by the National Park Service in D.C., which is a federal agency we work most closely with, um, this initiative has to do with uh, recognizing uh, resources connected with the Reconstruction period after the Civil War. And certainly the log cabin here. Uh, is an important reconstruction resource that is fortunately already on Virginia Landmarks Register and the uh, National Register of Historic Landmarks. 
So we can simply go forward and amend that just a little bit uh, to connect it with the reconstruction initiative. Right, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and I'm looking forward to the rest of the program. I wouldn't be here, Vangelique, if, 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 if I didn't give her the nickname of Dr. Persistent. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> She, she found this location with her work, and I don't think that many people believed that uh, anything was going to come of this. I think if she had not been persistent, it's tough enough to be persistent when you're five miles away, but when you're hundreds of miles away, that's, that's even tougher. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to be a part of this. I'm also delighted because I have so much love of history. The reality is that in, in school, we looked back and we read about things, and it was two-dimensional. It didn't give us any depth. But when you see things, when you can physically touch things, it gives that third dimension. And we're all part of our history, whether we like it or not, whether it's good history, whether it's bad history, doesn't make any difference. It is who we are. It is how we got to where we are. And we should never forget that. And we should celebrate it and be proud of what we have accomplished in life and what our ancestors accomplished in life. And I think that uh, remembering that today is a good time to do that. Thank you. Ben was supposed to be reading the text of the plaque for us. Well, we were all gathered around the plaque. And so imagine, if you will, <laughs> The plaque is here, <laughs> and Glenn can now come and read the inscription. Yeah. Patrick Robert Parker Sidney, 1854-1950, marker U95. Born and slave on one of William Sidney's plantations in Halifax County, Patrick Robert Parker Sidney became literate at a freedman's school after the Civil War a preacher and a farmer. In his youth, he began crafting grave markers in the 1890s and remained active until the 1940s. Sidnor won renown as a skilled stone cutter and engraver who made his work widely accessible. His designs and inscriptions memorialized the lives of African Americans across Southside Virginia. His home, the nearby Patrick Robert Parker Sidnor Law Cabin, is listed on the Virginia Landmarks Register and the National Register of Historic Places. Thank you. Just excited, amen, to be able to be here on so, such a momentous occasion. This is the first time for me, amen, to be a part of uh, uh, a dedication to a worthy individual. Uh, as far as historical references go, I'm gonna make my comments short, amen. We already, it's already been said that the log cabin is just a few miles down the road. But what's so interesting is that when we come together on today, we remember our forefathers. And as I was thinking about today, it lets me know that we are not restricted by our beginnings. That we can, as the song said, rise above it all. And so Parker Sittner did so. And he left a legacy to each and every one of us to let us know that it's gonna be all right. He was a preacher, a contemporary of mine. So when I that being said, as far as historical remarks go, we know, we've already read, we've heard his beginnings, we heard how that he pressed his way, he learned uh, through and by the help of the Lord to read, to write, and he put those gifts into practice. And those gifts that God enabled him to use, amen, is why we're here today. So with that being said, amen, we ask that if you get a chance to, to take a look at the, the log cabin that's going to be uh, uh, worked on in the near future, 
we ask you to do so, and as you look at it, remember and recognize that uh, God is able to do great things, and we just continue to hold on to his unchanging hand. God bless you. I did my research and I found out about my cousin, Angelina Reyes. Mm -hmm. And I researched Fred Zidnor and I shared his work with my class and it makes me feel so great. Mm -hmm. oh. For all of us, he's had his business, he raised his daughter, he raised, and his daughter raised my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And I never met him, but I feel like this is a new start to a new beginning for the family's legacy, mm -hmm. for newer leaders in the African American community, and other generations. So mm -hmm. thank you. Blackers be here today too, and, and I'm so thankful that through researching some untold stories in our county's history, I've become acquainted with Dr. Angelita Reyes and, and gotten to know Carol more and more. If you go to, get out your pencils and papers, www.sovahomefront.org, that's Sova as in Southern Virginia, and homefront.org. Um, there are many, many historic landmarks featured on what we call our Civil War Sesquicentennial Homefront website. And one of the most special landmarks is the Sidnor Cabin. And I'm glad that we were able, through a grant from the Virginia Tourism Corporation and some local partners, including Literacy Interactives, to, who helped fund this website. When we first had the initial gathering of this project at the BFW, Mayor Allgood supported us, and we're grateful for that. So thank you for everything you've done. Many of you might know is the, uh, another great grandson of Parker Sidnor, and this individual actually resided in the log cabin. He lived in the log cabin while he was attending school. And that person is uh, Larry Donnell Shields. Should you desire to know the secrets of the log cabin? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Larry has many of those secrets. <laughs> Thank you. 